Hello and welcome. In this video, you will learn how you can display the product we have created in the previous video uh, in a nice table in the dashboard here. It is very important if you haven't watched the previous video because that was very important. You should go and watch it because we learn a lot. So in this video, we will also refactor our code and display it in a table. You will also learn a few techniques on Laravel that you have not seen before. So let's start. You know. We have written all our code in the previous video in the web.php. This is not the place we are going to write this code. The place for writing this code is going to be a controller, right? I will cut everything. I will come to the wish test controller and in the index function, I'm going to write this code. So I'm going to remove this slash and it is going to return something. Now I'm going to rename the function also. It is going to be a test, but it should uh, refer to a controller. Now I can just write my controller as a wish list slash index. I have a very nice auto completion package. Mm, I don't know what is the name of it, but, but I think it's related to Laravel. That's why it can auto complete and read all my classes. It is going to go to this controller, which is the wish list controller and at index, which is going to be the function. And of course, auth is not defined here i will just import it and save it everything should work fine as expected if i refresh it yes we have the data one of the worst thing about graphql is the data structure i don't know how it works in Vue, uh, on react or any other framework and um, like how you will deal with graphql data but in shopify it is a nightmare like literally this is the data you have body container data the structure of it, the data is very annoying. That's why I don't like it. So let's see how we can uh, get this data. So I'll come to the code here. Of course, I'm going to give it a proper name. And the proper name for this one is going to be wishlists. So it is a plural. If you're hearing some voices, it is coming from outside. I don't know what these people are doing. They are having party in this quarantine. So um, I hope you don't hear those voices. So that's it. This is the wish list and this is the controller and everything. Now, the thing is, if I come to the controller, currently I am returning the data. I should not return the data. I should return a uh, table, right? So here is the point. If I come to my app, this is the product page. This product page will be like it is a view and I have to send the data here, but I cannot send the data there. Check it out. If someone visit the product here I'm going to return a view which is a view here so I can open this one for you now it is not going to work like that so here is the thing uh, how should I do it like I have the wish list here which is a get request but this is different there is something called like partial that you can do it it is like using a backend to create a partial and then you can load the partial in your product dot blit here so here is what you can do i'm going to the open the view here and inside the partials i will create a file i will call it wishlist table dot blit php you can name it anything you want now all i have to do is send the data here let's check this out instead of returning your data like this i'm going to assign it into a variable called products equal to this data and I'm going to return a view here and the view is going to accept two parameters if you know Laravel of course you know it so I'm going to say it should go to the partials folder and inside the partials what was the name of it it was wishlist mm -hmm. table that's it and the second parameter for the view is going to be the data that you are going to send you can use the compact function to specify the products now if you save it here now everything should work just fine right it is just returning a partial with the data so if i come to the partial that i have here let's put an h3 of hello and see if this is working or not i'll come here now this time it is not test anymore so it was wishless you refresh it hello is working just fine now let's see if you have access to the data that you have sent now in laravel you cannot oops not this one which data we have sent it was called products 
so in Laravel what you can do is you can access the variables here like this now if you want to like output the variable here it is going to throw an error because of course this is an object so you cannot directly do this one but what you can do is you can use the dd or die and dump to display this data now you refresh it this is the data you have so you have to go inside the body the error is like false because we do not have any error so this is how you can do you can die and dump and inside this one you can say okay go to the body but if you specify body it should throw an error you know why because body is not an object it is an array this was some of the mistake i was making while i was developing the app you should check the data that you have properly then you will have access to the data how about the container of course container is an object because it says here so you can access container like this refresh it cool how about the data data is an array so the container should grab the data nice you have the data now you have the nodes as i said i really don't like the data structure they have for the nodes you can specify it how would you specify it like you have data and then the the next one is going to be nodes you refresh it now and here is all the data you have now you have an array of those data so what you can do is you can display it in a nice table cool you have it now what i'm going to do is i'm going to come to the tailwind you like css i'm going to copy this table for now this table does not have any design i don't need this hello i don't need this extra data all i have to do is just run a for each here which is a blit and it is going through the, all the products now the thing is here you can specify products here but the nicer way would be to go all the way down to its root something like this and it is going to be as item or let's say product as a singular now i will bring this table item here and now it should show two table item here for me now let's refresh our page here you go we have the table which is which is showing two of them because we have only two data and instead of this title and view and other stuff it is going to display those data so i'm going to display those data but the video i'm just afraid of the video that's going to get longer now how will you access those data since you have access to this information here now you can display the title since the first one is the title you can simply say product and is this an array yes so you can say title if you know how to beautify this data i don't know there is no way i think to make it look nicer like the data that you can that that come from the graphql from shopify it is not nice i really don't like it now instead of the author what i can do is i can display some other information but for now this is all the information i need and let this one to be here how i'm going to display this one in the product here using partial right it is very easy now how would you do this one you can just include a partial here oops you can just say include or include here and it is going to the partials dot wishlist table uh, when you do this one now save it let's come to the dashboard uh, it required me to log in again so if this is happening for you just come to your app now it is not happening on production so you come to your product and the variable products is undefined let's check it out here it is working just fine here but in here the product is undefined ah i know why it is it happening because when you call this partial it assumes that this product variable is accessible because the way it is going to work is partial is just including the code here when it include the code here it is not going to work the way you want it 
so the other um, the new tool that I'm going to teach you now is very helpful because as I said you have not heard of this before this is the first time you are going to hear this one and it is very useful and before I knew about this product I used to send an Ajax request to this endpoint and grab all of those information and then I would display it in a table now I don't have to do this there is a tool called include for like fragment element it is a nice tool you can install it on github this is how you can use it first you have to install it using npm since I'm not going to install anything using npm also this is by github and github itself is using the same technique let me show you how they use it if I inspect element here and I'm going to show you the network tab and if I hover over one of these link and let's check it out I go to the pull request it doesn't refresh the whole page it just send an Ajax request here and it is going to grab those data as you can see like there is a blue bar is coming from here now I'll go back to let's say issues it doesn't like refresh the whole page all it is doing is it is going to like ref like reloading a like part of the page so if I check it out now this is a partial view um, if I check the response this is an HTML response that is coming from Ajax and github like they themselves is using the same technique they are going to partially load this data and they are going to display it it is very easy also see the master like like this hover card then hover card hover card all of this or like partials they can use this like they are using display I think they are using um, bootstrap so if I am about to use this tool that we have here called fragment I can install it easily so this is how you can install it right so if I come to the default that master that blade here and scroll to the top of the page do you remember the turbo link we have installed turbo link using the AMP package exactly the same way you can use the fragment you can just put a pack like github slash fragment like include the fragment element and now you have access to this one in your app so the way you use it it is very simple all you have to do is just copy this one it like you can specify a top level parent uh, class also but the way I use it here is how I use it I will put it in the partial here oops I hope it doesn't have any conflict now this is the tips this is the fragrance where it is going to send the request and this of course this is going to be the same uh, URL as your data going to send a wish list and inside this one until that time it is going to show this text here so how it is going to display that you know this is the wish list and this is the table now I'll come to this fragment like this uh, wish list portal here I will remove this part and I will save it now this time if I come to my app come back product here it shows the loading but it is not displaying anything if there is a 404 stuff that's why it is not loading so what I can do is I can debug it check this one out unpackage cannot find the github fragment so if this is happening for you uh, make sure you specify like you install this properly I don't exactly remember how I have downloaded this one that's why it is stopping so here it should be at github now this time if I come to my app refresh it I don't see any error coming to the product it is still loading I don't see any error but it should load this wish list here but it is not loading I don't know for some reason it is not loading but it is just showing the loading here now I'll close this one come to the customer coming here and I'm going to investigate on why it is not working and I'll be back soon